Hello everyone! We're still on day number two of working on this chip eat simulator slash emulator slash interpreter. And in the last video, we uh, were able to render the game using SDL to uh, a nice window here. And uh, this is an example of loading up the game Blinky now, which, like, given the fact it loads and runs, uh, I'm pretty confident that for the most part this interpreter is working pretty well. And so the last few things we need to do are get keyboard input working and then perhaps clean up uh, like the SDL window and things like that when we close the program. Not too bad. Alright, let's give it a try. I have no clue how to get keyboard input from uh, SDL and so I'm going to use DuckDuckGo here to find out how we do it. Handling the keyboard. Let's see here. We've got some keys. STL pull event. If the event is a key down or a key up event, this looks pretty easy. Let's give it a try. Okay, so we're already checking for STL quit. Else if the event type is equal to a key down. Cool. And then if the event type is equal to a key up, we do something there as well. Now I have to figure out what keys I want to map to the 16 buttons that can be pressed. 16 is such a weird number for number of keys, but I get it. It's four bits. Uh, it's a power of two. So uh, it's just, what do you map that to? And so I'm going to map it to the uh, hex keys, I think. So I'm just going to map 0 to 9 and then A, B, C, D, E, F. It's probably a terrible way to go, but um, well, that's what I'm going to do for now. So to do that, I need to uh, let's figure out first of all what this key down thing looks like. Uh, let's just write to the console what key was pressed. How do I find that out here? Um, Key. This looks reasonable. Key dot key symbol. What is key symbol? Key symbol. Wow, it just keeps on going. There's uh, <laughs> there's there's no end to it. Uh, you int. That's probably what I want. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. I'm guessing that for all the keys on my keyboard, it's just going to be ASCII stuff. Okay, so it's loading Blinky, and while it's loading Blinky, I'm going to press some buttons, and I'm just getting a whole bunch of zeros on my console. So at least it's doing something, but obviously the way I'm getting that key character is totally bogus. Let's see if this gets... Yeah, it's asking for the event key. Print key info. Key info. And it's using... They're using exactly what I guessed to use. They're using the key symbols Unicode value. Darn. So that means something's not quite right here. Well, IntelliSense didn't lead me astray that time. It's just that it's just not working the way I'd expect. Let me just make sure again that I'm, I'm not losing it. Hitting the one button. No, two button, three button, four button, they're all just all a bunch of zeros. Let's take a look. We'll actually stick the debugger in there and see if we can glean a bit of information about this thing. Um, there's the timestamp, window ID, the key symbol. That all looks good. It's the Unicode thing that is bogus. So maybe we can use that sim. And let me just try hitting the number zero. And let's take another look at that. Scan code zero, SDLK zero. It's just Unicode's always zero. I wonder if that's a bug with the C-sharp bindings or a bug in SDL or just Unicode doesn't contain the thing I'm interested in. Um, so we'll go with symbol. And we'll just call two string on that for now. Uh, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
A, B, C, D, E, F. That looks pretty reasonable. We can use that. It's going to be a bit of a pain. Um, let's see what that enumeration looks like. Is this STL key code? It can't navigate to that? That's bogus. Uh, key code is equal to this thing. I'm trying to see if I can cheat here. There we go. We can navigate it to it now. Uh, so, STLK 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are all in a nice row there. And so, instead of writing like a big switch statement or something, uh, what I can do is I can just convert this to a integer and then subtract 48 from it. And that will give me my first uh, 10 values here. And then A, B, C, D, E, F, I can just subtract 97. Sweet. So that, look, that sounds pretty good. Is this just, this just looks like ASCII almost. ASCII table? Let's take a quick look. Come on, DuckDuckGo. There it is. Here's some ASCII. 48 is zero, it is just ASCII. A, lowercase a is 97. Cool, it is. That's nice. All right, so if we'll convert this to an integer, if the code is less than, I've already forgotten what it was, memory of a goldfish, less than 57, less than 58 really, less than 58, then let's go byte key index, go zero, key index is equal to key code minus 48. I might as well start as an integer here, whatever. Else key index is equal to key code minus 97, was it? Minus 97. But I actually want that to start at the 10th position, so it's actually minus 87. Minus 87, cool. Uh, let's write a little method to do that because I don't want to repeat that code again. So private uh, int key code to key. And we take one of these things, which is an SDL key code, which comes in, out as an integer because I do my casting. And then we're going to return that key index. Something like that. Key code to key index. And then, actually, and then let's actually return uh, one shifted by that key index. And so this will actually get orged straight into our keyboard, I think. I think, I think. Key code to key index. Okay. So now we've got var key is equal to key code. I gotta make this static down here. Key code to key this thing. And then I should be able to take the CPU's keyboard and or that with key. And then here I should be able to end it with the inverse of key like that to clear it. Let's see what happens. Let's load up Pong and see if I can uh, move this move this thing around. No clue what key it would be. No clue if it's working at all. Let's uh, let's print out the keyboard state every frame as well. Console dot right line the CPU's keyboard. So it's printing out a bunch of stuff. That looks pretty good. Uh, it stopped working at a certain point. Oh, keyboard. Uh, how is keyboard working? I'm trying to store 16 values into a byte. That's not gonna work at all. Let's read a little bit about the keyboard. Check the keyboard and the key corresponding value of the X is currently in down position. It is increased by two. How did I do that? I've already forgotten. 
if keyboard shifted by that thing. So keyboard would have to be a U short then, because we've got 16 of these things. Waiting for key press. Key press. Let me see how this works here. Works away. Wait for key press, store the value of the key in VX. All the execute stuff. So keys pressed and the value of that key is stored in VX. Okay. I think. Waiting for key press. That's not quite what we want to do. Okay, I, I think I'm going to come back to this thing. Let's throw an exception there. And now I need to convert these all to U shorts. And let's see if that works a little bit better. So we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Those all look pretty good. Okay, now let's see if the game's actually calling anything for the keyboard. If keyboard shifted by that opcode. So there's some keyboard stuff. That's the only keyboard stuff in our interpreter. Let's see if that's being called at all. It is. Okay. And what's what key is it looking for? It's looking in zero. The keyboard shifted by the value of that thing. So it's looking in zero. So it's looking for the first button, which would be zero. And then here, it's still looking for contents of B0, which is now 4. I wonder if this is two player Pong or something. So now it's looking for C and B. And now we're back to 1. Okay. So you should see something happen as we hold down this value. I'm not trying to change the code, I want to insert a breakpoint here, come on. I wonder if I can just force that button to be held for now, just to test this. Because it looks like something here is not working. Keyboard shift by the opcode. Sorry, just trying to think about this for a second. What I'll do is I'll just set the keyboard to always be that value just to see. there's something we can do here. Okay, as a bonus, we got stuck in a good loop here. And now, which one are we looking at? We're looking at 01, okay. Keyboard is even one right, so this is shifting it by one first, which will give us zero. So actually, it's it's keyboard button two. Let's try that out instead. Keyboard button two gives us one, and with OXO one, still gives us one. It's not equal to one, so it increments the program counter. Yeah, 
Yeah, that looks pretty reasonable. So it's doing something with the program counter. Ah, so it is it is moving it now. Okay, let's see if we can reproduce that here. Okay, I can move it. I don't know what I was doing before, but how do I move it down? There it is. So yeah, this is a two-player Pong. It's, uh, it's wanting the other user to control it as well. And there's got to be some keys that they are going to use. There they are. Okay, so I can <laughs> I can try to play against myself, but this isn't going super well. I'll just I'll sit in a place where everything works great, and then kind of showcase that things are working on this side. Not too bad. All right, so we've got keyboard input working. Um, I don't know why it appeared to not be working before. I must have just been pressing the wrong keys. So the last thing I want to do in this video was at the end of all of this, I should really clear up or clean up SDL. And so let's see if I had an example here of how to do that. Uh, we should destroy the render and destroy the window. So SDL dot destroy render and destroy the window. What did I call it? Window. Okay, was there anything else I created that I need to get rid of? We created window, we created render, we've destroy, destroyed both those things. I think that looks pretty decent. And I'm going to remove that CPU keyboard right line. And I'm gonna remove that code that's kind of dangling there and I'm also gonna remove that CPU draw display. And now, I think with that code cleaned up, we're pretty close to being done. Oh, I can play some Pong against myself. That's pretty cool. Not very good at it. <laughs> Come on now. There you go. Yeah, I got a point. Get one more. Now the opponent doesn't stand a chance because there's nobody playing. All right, I think that's pretty much it. What I might do is in the next video, just clean this up a tiny bit. I'll remove some of the old code, maybe put the CPU into its own uh, file, and then we'll commit it to GitHub and probably call this project a wrap. So if any of you find any bugs in it, Definitely open a pull request or an issue and we'll take a look at it. But I think as a first pass at an emulator slash interpreter, this has worked out pretty well. Thanks for watching.